Hello YouTube, Sam here from youtube.com slash onlivegamer for the new Boston and in this tutorial we're going to be learning more about try catch statements. Now when you use the try catch statement you try the code and then if there an error happens this catches that error and then you can do whatever you want um, if an error happens. Now you can also catch the exceptions themselves and um, show the output of that. So what I mean by this is Let's go ahead and catch, and then we're going to use a name for our exception. You can name this whatever you want. I'm just going to call it E. And you can see here that it gives us a little help here. It's got catch exception as, and then exception type. And then there's the win keyword, uh, which we will be learning about later on. So we'll just call our exception EX as, and we'll just do a simple exception. So any kind of exception is going to fall under exception. So let's go ahead and show an error has occurred. And what we'll do is we'll add a new line. So environment dot new line. And now what we're going to do is we're going to show that um, error. So we'll just access our error um, object, which is ex. So if that error is caught, it's created. And we can show ex dot to string. So let's go ahead and run this. We will go ahead and click add all. And you can see it says an error has occurred and it says system dot index out of round out of range exception. Index was outside the bounds of the array. At try catch dot form one dot button add click. So this shows us the project, this shows us the class, this shows us the method, uh, in our case the in our case the button click event, and it shows us the location of the uh, where the program is run and it shows us the line number that the error is on. Now this is very useful when you're debugging your program and if you release a program you can have this in here and it will you can tell them to let's say email exceptions to them so that they can fix it in so that you can fix it in uh, updates. So let's go ahead and close out of this. Now we can also catch uh, certain exception types. So we'll, we'll catch an index out of range exception, which is the type of exce exception that this try block throws for us. So throwing an exception is basically the, what you would call an exception happening. Now you can also throw your own exceptions by using the throw keyword, but we're going to learn about that later on. So we're going to be catching an index out of range exception. Let's go ahead and run this. We click add all and you can see that it gives us the same output here. Now let's go ahead and catch a different kind of exception here. So let's go ahead and catch and you can see there's a whole bunch of exceptions that we can use. So let's do um, invalid times, time zone exception. So if we go ahead and run this, click add all, you can see that it crashes. Now the reason it crashes is because this catch statement is only going to catch invalid time zone exceptions. It's not going to catch any other type. So that is one reason to use just exception as a default type, which will catch any type of exception. Now you can also have multiple catch statements. So we can catch an index out of range exception. And we can come down here below this right here. And we can also catch other types of exceptions. So catch ex as, uh, let's just say, application exception, even though this will not run. So message box, and we will just say an error has occurred in the application. So now you'll know uh, the difference between each one of these. So what it's going to do is, if this happens, it's going to go ahead and run this code. And if we get an application exception, it's going to go ahead and run this code. So this is very useful if you want to see what happens and then you want to tell them a way to fix it. So if the index is out of range, you can have a message box that tells them how to fix uh, that problem. Or if there's an application exception, you can tell them how to fix that problem there. So let's go ahead and run this. Go ahead and click Add All. And you can see it catches the index out of range exception. We'll go ahead and click OK. 
and we'll close out of that. So go ahead and practice this sum. Uh, you can add multiple catch statements. Now if you catch an exception, just a normal ex exception, a, a default, and then catch another exception, it's going to run that code uh, twice because exception is there for anything. And then let's say you have the index out of range exception after that. Whatever code is in between each of them is going to run. So for example, if I type exception right here, and then application exception, you can see that we get a warning. And it says, unused local variable ex, um, which that doesn't matter, but it says, catch block never reached because system.application exception inherits from system.exception. So what that's saying is that this will run and then it will never get to this because this inherits from that. And this is going to cover everything. So we'll just go ahead and take this out right here. So practice with some try catch statements. Um, use multiple catches. Um, you can find out what uh, types of exceptions they are by using the ex.toString. And you can add a catch statement for that. So in our case, it was an index out of range. So once you're comfortable with using that, go ahead and move on to the next tutorial.